Hi, and welcome to Straight Talk About God video. <clears throat> I'm Jack. I got some pretty amazing things today. Uh, the pictographs. It's all about pictographs and, and Jesus, right? I've dealt with a lot of different areas of study with <clears throat> excuse me, that confirm God's reality over the last 30 years. But there's so many layers that, you know, you can't get through all of them in a lifetime, right? But one of those layers is about pictographs. Pictographs. Now, each Hebrew letter is derived from an ancient picture, a little picture, okay? Um, and each pictograph and the Hebrew letter have a symbolic idea, okay? So the picture means something, and the letter carries that symbology all the way through when it doesn't look like a picture anymore, okay? So not only do the, do the whole words relate in definite ways, but the individual letters within the words fill out more, even, even more details, okay? Uh, just by way of one pictograph, to give you the idea, the picture the the, uh, the the letter Gimel, Gimel, the third letter, okay, Gimel. It's written like that, Gimel, okay, and it says here to lift up, pride, or animal, okay. Oh, and let me stop right now to remind you that. The, the Hebrew alphabet is very small compared to English, you know, very small. And so each word has several different meanings, and they all kind of relate, but they can look very different, okay? We'll get to that for sure. So what you have to do is take the context within which the words appear to find out what the, really me or the real meaning is, intended meaning. Okay, well, this used to be a picture of a camel. Gimel is camel. Okay. Okay. We'll get to a bunch of more of those in a minute. So, the the two letter word for God in English is L. You've heard that E L L. But in in Hebrew, <clears throat> in Hebrew, it's A Elif. L. And A in English definitely is a vowel, but in Hebrew, Aleph is not really a vowel. It's a consonant, even though it's an A, okay? There are no vowels in Hebrew. So, as we'll see, the, the word for son is B-R. Now, in English, we've heard of a bar mitzvah. That's a sun ritual of the sun, B-A-R. Well, there is no A in, in, uh, in Hebrew. See, so bar is spelled B-R, okay? Because the A is not considered a vowel the way we do. It might be a bit confusing, but there it is. But anyway, L, E-L in English is A-L in Hebrew, Alif Lamed, okay? Alif Lamed. Uh, Let's see. Uh, we did the symbol of the letters and two letters. Okay, well, Aleph. Aleph is an ox. Strong leader, right? First. It's the God letter. The first letter. God letter, right? Aleph. And Lamed. Lamed over here is a, f a staff or a shepherd's crook, right? And it can symbolize a shepherd, authority, control. What's another one here? Oh, also the tongue. See what I mean? The tongue and a shepherd, 
uh, well, the shepherd gives orders to the sheep, right? Okay. So the word for for God, L, is the first leader who is a shepherd is the authority, uh, gives down the rules, kind of stuff. Okay. And those two letters perfectly describe God. So what I'd like to do today is to go into three names and then go on to the first word of the Bible, the very first word of the Bible. You know, mostly the first chapter of a book or the first sentence of a paragraph kind of tells the story in a capsule and then it goes on to detail later on, right? And then at the end, it says it over again. You, you remember the old the old saying about how to give a speech or how to write something? It's tell them what you te tell them what you're going to tell them, tell them, and then tell them what you told them, right? So the first word of the Bible, not only the first book, but the first chapter, but the first sentence, the first word, does the same thing. It's amazing stuff. Okay. Um, uh, again, we have to make sure that we get the context so we know what the, what the word meanings are and so forth. Okay. So the paragraph, I mean the pictographs of Jesus' crucifixion. Mm, crucifixion. Okay. Well, the first word in the Bible is barashit. And it says, in the beginning. That one word says, in the beginning. Oh, and let me remind you also that the grammar in Hebrew is backwards, okay? So in English it says, in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. That makes sense in English. But in Hebrew they twist it around and it says, in the beginning created gods the heavens and the earth. See, the subject of the verb switches, goes opposite to what we're used to. See, God created, no, it's created God. Created somebody, who? God. Created God, the heavens and the earth. Okay. I know maybe that'll help get rid of some of the confusion. The first word in the Bible, again, is barashit. No, 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 that's, you'll have to wait. <laughs> <laughs> I'll get to the first word. First, we're going to have to take the name of God, okay? Now, I did one little video on this using the, the number values of the word Y-H-V-H. Jehovah, the Tetragrammaton, okay? But this time, we want to look at the pictographs, okay? The pictographs. And again, there's four letters, Yod, He, Vav, He. Here's the pictures. Here's Yod. We'll come again. We'll come ac come ac across that uh, quite a few times in this time. Okay, and it's a hand or an arm or a deed or work. What else do they put on there besides that to make? Okay, so that's that's the Yod. The Hey is is here, and it means behold. It's a little man with his arms up. Hey, look! Behold! Or reveal. And it also can be used as single letter as the. Okay? The. Okay? And then we have uh, Vav. Vav right here. Vav is... What is that? That's a, that's a tent peg. Right? A tent peg. And it means to secure, or hold, or add, and sometimes it's used by itself as a V, as the, okay? Vav, okay? And then we have another hey, okay? So we have, we put it together, we have a closed hand, behold, or the, a tent peg, and another the. And we put that together, and we have hand, Behold, reverse grammar, hand behold, nail behold. Well, what do we know about 
revealing about a man, I mean, a, a hand and a nail. Huh? That's the crucifixion. God's name that He gave us, okay, the name He gave Moses on Sinai. He said, well, you've been called this. This is my name, Jehovah. And what does it mean? It means Christ is coming. Listen to what He says, right? The whole Bible is a typical, uh, typical of Christ. All the names and the events and the numbers, and it's all about Jesus because He is the main messenger of God to the earth, to humanity, to tell us what God is doing and what He wants us to do to get in on it. It's all about Jesus, okay? It's not about salvation, okay? It's not about salvation. Jesus' message was not salvation. Look up some of the other <laughs> videos on that, and we'll get on to this one here. Okay, the next one, the next one I want to take a look at is the name Jesus in Hebrew. Okay, and we got th four words there, and it's Yod, Shin, Vav, Ein. Well, we know what Yod is. That's that, that hand with the arm. Yet Shin is a new one. Sheen. There's, there's Sheen, right? See, and that's the way it looks right there. It comes from a pictograph of a tooth. It's a tooth. And it means to devour, you know, teeth devour, destroy. Okay, what else do they have here? Consume. Okay, Sheen. And then we've got Vav again. And remember, remember Vav, Vav was that tent peg, that nail, right? That nail. Okay? And then the last one is ein. That's an eye. Okay? It's an eye. So we put all those together and we have a deed, yod, the hand, a deed of destruction. That's the sheen. Hmm. Destruction by a nail is revealed with the hay, with the iron revealed, the eye. Well, what is that but the, the crucifixion, right? Huh? Okay. How about the, um, the name for Satan? Hmm? Satan. Well, in Hebrew, there's only three letters, right? Three letters. In English, it would be S-T-N, Satan, S-T-N. But in Hebrew, it's that sheen word, right? Again, sheen, the teeth, destroy, consume. Huh? Tet is over here. Tet is depicted as a basket with an X in it, and it means there to surround, surround. But a bunch of other meanings are in there, too, because the Tet pictograph is a snake. A snake? Now we've got Sheen, Tet, and Nun. Nun here. Nun, there's the Hebrew letter, is a fish. A fish. Well, wait a minute. Sheen, Tet, Nun. Destroy, snake, Life. <laughs> it's a, de a destruction, a deed of destruction, right? Of life. Of the seed is another word for that seed. Uh, that's the Garden of Eden. That's what this that a being did in the Garden of Eden. They called him the destroyer of life. Satan. Isn't that wonderful? <laughs> Genesis 1-1. One, 1-1-1-1. One. One, 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 one. Okay? The first word, the first, well, we've got, in other words, in, in the first place, there are seven words in the first verse. Okay? Seven words. That's the number of completion. And Ivan Panin, you'll see in one of my other videos, did the whole Bible. He did a, a, a translation based only on the number schemes. Seven, the number scheme of seven runs, it runs rampant through the whole Bible. 
It's everywhere. You know, uh, 10 or 20 features of seven will be found in two or three verses. It holds it all together. And the reason he did his translation was to, was to clarify which of these two interpretations was the real one. Well, was this, this guy's name or was it this guy's name? Well, when you put this guy's name in the list, all the sevens work out. When you put this person's name in the list, it doesn't work out. So this one must be the one that was intended because it fits in the scheme. Okay, That's what Ivan Panin did. Seven, the number of completion. The whole idea, overall big picture idea, is contained in the first verse of the Bible. Seven numbers, or seven words. Okay, seven words. Uh, who's the creator? Don't say God. God is not the creator. Because it says in verse 1, God's two, three, four, uh, plural. The word is plural. That means, see, that there were more than one entity involved in the creation. But who absolutely was the creator? It wasn't God. It was Jesus, wasn't it? Yeah, you knew that, Jesus. Oh my, we're going to have to stop for just a second. And, and I have to get my Bible. I forgot to bring my Bible in here. Okay, here we go. Okay, it didn't take very long, did it? <laughs> so what we're doing is confirming that Jesus is the creator. Okay? Jesus is the creator. First we go to John 1. John 1, 1 through 3. Okay? 1 through 3. In the beginning was the word, that's logos in Greek, and that's before the logos, the word, had a physical body. Okay? It was just the word. Didn't have a physical body like Jesus. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word, Logos, was with God, and the Word was God. When you look it up, it says the same essence as God. You see, Jesus had 100% God consciousness and a 100% physical body. That's how he could be both man and God at the same time. Okay? But at this time, he didn't have a physical body. He was of the same essence and was God of the same essence as God. Angels don't qualify. They don't have full God consciousness. They're created out of the general regular God energy, but they're not God. Okay. Verse 2, the same was in the beginning with God and all things that were, were made by him, the Logos, and without him was not anything made that was made. Okay? In him there was life. Okay, go back to Jesus is the creator. You want confirmation? At the mouth of two or three of things confirmed. Go over to Colossians 1. Colossians 1. What is it? 1 through 16. Verse 16, Colossians 1, 16 says, For by him, he's talking about Jesus, For by him were all things created that were in heaven and in any earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created by him and for him. Jesus. Okay. One more confirmation three times. Hebrews 1, 1 through 3. One, it's a whole outline of Jesus from beginning to end. Okay? It tells about he's the heir of God, he's the creator, he's God's glory, he's God's image, uh, he sustains the whole thing with his own power, he purged our sin and he sat down at God's right hand. Done. Right? God, 
who at sundry times and diverse manners spake in the past unto the fathers by the prophets, hath, God hath, in these last days spoken unto us by his Son, capital S, whom he hath appointed heir of all things, to whom also, by whom also he made the worlds. God made the worlds by using Jesus as the express agency of creation. Also made the worlds, who being the brightness outraying of God's glory and the express image of his person, whenever God wanted to be in the physical image, that's what it was. Looked like Jesus. Didn't look like Bill Clinton. By the word of his power, when he made him, made by himself, he purged our sins, sat down at the right hand of God of majesty on high. Jesus is the creator. Okay. <clears throat> it's one of the reasons God's name talks about him and his crucifixion. And his own name talks about his crucifixion. Okay. But the very first word, barashit, okay, seven words in there. It says, barashit, bara, alahim, at, hishmim, vat, ha'eretz. Seven words. Okay. Barashit is the in the beginning word. Okay. In the beginning. Okay. Six words. Beth, resh, Elif, Sheen, Yod, Tav. Okay? Beth is the second word. It's a tent, dwelling place. Okay? And it says household, in or into, family. Okay? And then, and then we've got Resh, is a new one. That's a man's head, the head person. And so we've got a tent and a head person. And then we've got Aleph again. And that's the number one. That's the God letter. First person. Okay. And then Sheen. Remember the teeth? Destroyer. Consuming. Destroy. And then Yod again. Where, 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 oh, Yod went over here. Right. Yod was the arm and the hand again, right? Arm and the hand, Yod. And then Tav, again Tav, is a picture of a cross. Picture of a cross. So what do we have here? We've got uh, the, a tent or a dwelling place, the head person who represents the first leader, Aleph, strong, strength, right? And then we've got teeth, destroy and consume, yod, work or a deed, and then we've got cross. Cross. Wow. We put all that together and what have we got? We have the son who is a leader is destroyed by his own hand on a cross. The very first word of the Bible tells all about Jesus, right? He's the Son of God who came, was destroyed by his own hand on a cross, gave himself up. The Hebrews didn't make up that alphabet, did they? Huh? The pictures came first, and then they morphed over the years into lines and squiggles and so forth. Whoever made this alphabet up made it up in such a way that all of this stuff comes out in detail a thousand, two thousand, three thousand, five thousand years later. Probably this alphabet was made up at the same time or around the same people as the zodiac, which would have been Adam and Seth and maybe Enoch. That was all happening back then. Okay? But you know that big words are made up of little words. Right? Little words. Well, 
in Hebrew, you can have one letter be a word. You can have two letters be a word. Three letters be a whole word, right? And you can have the four, the, the six letters in Badashit, you can have those six letters have three or four different words incorporated in there, okay? This is really neat stuff. Really neat stuff. Look at this. There's Badashit. B-A-R-B-R-A-S-Y-T. Okay? Well, the B-R is the sun. We know that. Bar. B -R. But B-R-A by itself means creates. Right? Creates. B-R-A means creates. And the S-Y-T by itself means veil or sun. Sun. And the A-S by itself means fire. Creates fire sun. <laughs> I mean, all of that stuff is in the first word besides the stuff that we just talked about. Okay? We'll go on to the next word is the B-R-A again. Because this time it only wants to say B-R, Son, A, God, Son of God. Creating fire, Son of God. Alahim, Alahim, A-L, that's a God word again, right? A-L, God, God. Drop down under that, and the L-H by itself is flame, flame and fire. Okay? And then we go up on top. We have the H by itself is the, and the YM by itself is the word for sea or expanse. Expanse, sea, waters, made the heavens. Expanse, okay, flame. The next word is AT, and it means God's essence. And it's the first and last, first and last, A and T. Eight of Tav, God's essence, which was what Jesus was, God's essence. Okay. Now the word for <coughs> the word for heavens, expanse, firmament means expanse, right? Is H by itself is a the, and then H S M mean God's name. Have you heard the term Hashem? H A Shem, H A, in modern English Hebrew, if there is such a thing, H A means the the, okay. The na the main newspaper, over in in um, <coughs> in Israel is Ha Eretz. Eretz sound familiar? That's the Earth coming up, Earth. Ha the Earth, the Earth, the name of the paper, okay. But Hashem is the God. Shem means God. It's the name for God, H-S-M. If we take the M-Y-M as a single word, we have the word for water. Water, right? Water. But go underneath there, and you have place for S-M, place. And then you have Y-M again, just like above, for the sea and the expanse, the water and the sea and the expanse. There's all of those details about the creation, okay? Heavens and the earth. The next word is is vat, okay? And the V again can stand for the or an by itself. And then the AT again is the same as the AT up here, God's essence. So it's the essence of God, right? And the last words is the again, H V Aritz, A R Y T. And look at what happens when you have the A and the R by itself. The word is light, right? And the word R Y T S, that's Tsadi, T S. Let me show you that. T S. Okay. And it's said, it's pronounced, it's pronounced T-S. Like the word nets, the T-S is pronounced that way. So it's ha-er-e-t-s, t 
TS. That's why I, that's why I wrote the TZ in there, so it'd be easier for you to understand that. TZ. R-Y-T-Z is the name for run. Fantastic stuff. Just fantastic. You know? There's no end to that. <laughs> there is no end to this thing. Um, you, you really need to go over to my other video on Ivan Penin in verse 1. Uh, he's got something like 15 or 16 features of 7 just in this one little verse here. See? The number of letters, the number of, of, of uh, consonants, uh, figures of speech, um, the number of words is a seven, as we know. God is real. <laughs> God is real. Okay? And not only is he real, but because he is real and does everything he says, anything you can check up on that God has said he's going to do, you can check up, if you can check up on it, you'll find that he already did it. Okay? I mean, most all of the prophecy, five-sevenths of the prophecy in the Bible is directed to the house of Israel, which is the northern ten-tribe kingdom, house of Israel. Out of that five-sevenths of prophecies to the house of Israel, my guess is that 87, 88, 90 percent of all of those prophecies have already come true. It's about the lost tribes. There's hundreds of prophecies. There's over 300 prophecies about the lost tribes, to the lost tribes, in the Bible. And most all of them have come true already. And you can check that out. Right? God said, checked it out. Wow, and the history books write out and say, England and the United States are Ephraim and Manasseh, the head two tribes of the northern kingdom of ten tribes of Israel. God is real, right? And if he's real, and all of that other stuff in the Bible is true, then maybe what most of Paul tells us about in the New Testament is also true. That if you run into a problem, or are called to do a project, and you run into negative stuff on the way, and it's going to be easier if you do it this way, or harder if you do it God's way. You do it God's way, and He promises. He said, you do, you act in trust of me, regardless of what the negative circumstances say, and I'll put my spirit in your body. Hmm. Ask anybody who you really think must be saved, because they're on the right track and they're with God and all that. And ask them if they feel the Holy Spirit when it came into their body. <laughs> right? The liars will tell you yes. <laughs> well, you don't feel anything. You know? You don't feel anything. But good works start to come out because the Holy Spirit works those works. Maybe that's true. Hmm? And if it's true, see, God said, when I look at you and I see my spirit, I don't see all your imperfections. Because if I did, if I saw those imperfections, that means you're close enough to me to be dead. You don't look at God. You don't come in contact with God and, die, and not die. You die right now. You look up in places in the Bible where somebody said, Oh, I saw God, I must be, I'm, I'm going to die. I didn't die. Oh, they expect to die when they're in the presence of God, right? A few people opened the Ark of the Covenant and looked in, and God killed 50,070 of them. Because that probably was all the people that were around there. 50,000 of them didn't look in the Ark. You know, it didn't take that long. You don't come into God's perfection without dying because of your imperfection. That's why the mercy seat is on top of the ark. 
it's a type of Christ in it. It, 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 it protects us from God's perfection, which is the Ten Commandments inside the ark. The covenant is, I mean, the, the, the mercy seat is on top to keep us safe. You know, it's Jesus is our buffer state, right? And when you get Jesus' spirit in your body, you're okay. Until it works its way out, and then you got to get some more. See? Faithing, acting in trust of God's Word. Wow. God's real. Thanks a lot for listening. And watching. <laughs> Thanks a lot for everything. God bless. <laughs>